Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we're going to find the second moment of area of a, well, what we call it, an annulus, a washer, something that has area starting from a radius from origin to R1 and ending at R2. So simply for this area right here, we're going to try to find the second moment of area. And we do that with respect to origin, and the equation is the integral of R squared dA where r is simply the distance from the origin to the area element. And we're going to take a thin strip all the way around at a distance r away from the origin and the thickness of dr. And so we're going to integrate that from r1, the inner radius, to the outer radius, r2. So that's an easy integral to make, except we cannot yet integrate r squared dA. We need to figure out what dA is equal to. And dA is equal to the circumference times the thickness, which would be 2 pi r times dr. So we have to replace dA by that. So this becomes the integral from r1 to r2 of r squared times 2 pi r dr. So we can take the 2 pi out of the integral. So this is 2 pi times the integral from r1 to r2 of r, the radius, to my area element, cubed times dr. Okay, that I can integrate. So this is equal to 2 pi times r to the fourth power divided by 4, evaluated from r1 to r2, which is equal to, well, 2 divided by 4, which is 1 half pi times when I plug in the upper limit, I get the outer radius to the fourth power, minus when I plug in the lower limit, I get the inner radius to the fourth power. And this here would be the, well, what we call second moment of area of that annular structure. Now what if R1 goes to zero? If R1 goes to zero, I have a complete disk structure, then I would have one half pi R squared to the fourth power, and when I think about the concept that the area is pi r squared, so if, for example, just so that we can get a feel for this equation, if r1 is equal to 0, then the second moment of area of the flat disk would be equal to 1 half pi r to the fourth power, because the outer radius simply would be r, and realizing that the area is pi r squared, so this would be equal to area. Well, let me write it out first, because I'll just pull it out first. So that would be 1 half pi r squared times r squared. So that would be the area. So this would be equal to 1 half the area times r squared. Now this looks familiar, because if we take the moment of inertia of a disk that has mass m, the moment of inertia would be one-half mass times r squared. So instead of mass again, we have area, and that's what we call the second moment of area. Which then lends us to believe that this is indeed a good equation when r1 is not equal to zero. It gives us the same result as if r1 was equal to zero. And that's how we find the moment of inertia of either a flat disk or a disk that has a hole inside with radius r1. And that's how it's done.